Harp on Sports, the bar, podcast, media, audio, and radio network. What do we have in store for you on this edition of the program? Florida, Georgia, Georgia, Florida, in the rearview mirror. The dogs won six of the last seven now in this sucker. And, you know, it starts to shift a little bit when it comes to structure going forward. Next year may be the last year in Jacksonville for a while. So we're going to look at the game and the dynamics of that rivalry going forward, especially with the new SEC with Texas and Oklahoma entering the fray. I'm going to look at that. Also, oh, a little Heisman hits. Gang, we got a month to go. We're a month away from the end of the college football regular season. We're a month away. And, you know, I, I think there are five guys right now. One of these five guys is going to win it. I think you. I, I can't think of the last time you could vote for five different guys first week of November. There's five different guys you could vote for right now. Right now. So we'll look at that as well. Also, ooh, Jim Harbaugh. Oh, gosh. Yikes. Michigan has rescinded an apparent offer to make him the highest paid football coach in all of the college ranks. You are looking at a deal in the neighborhood of nine years, $110 million is what we were looking at. Right around there, about 11, 12 million a year. Gone. Gone. And what this means for Michigan, what this means for college football going forward. All right. Harp on Sports, the bar, podcast, media, audio, radio network. Follow, share, like, subscribe at Harp on Sports Twitter, at Harp on Sports Instagram, Harp on Sports, auditory route via the bar, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Harp on Sports Facebook page, Harp on Sports YouTube channel, and of course, HarpOnSports.com. All right, uh, Florida, Georgia, talent-wise, not close, just not. I was thinking about this after the game. Florida has maybe two or three guys that could start for Georgia. There is a significant gap there, significant gap. Now, Florida's a better all-around football team than they were a year ago. Got a top-five recruiting class coming in. They're, they're building. They're definitely building, but they're not close to that yet. Not close to that yet. Who really is <laughs> at this point, you know, you, but you look back a couple weeks ago, Auburn played them tough, had them on the ropes. Uh, all right. Now Missouri's going to get a crack at them. Florida's just not close to that yet. And quarterback play elite line play, all of those things. Recruiting, 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 recruiting. And George, George is four or five years ahead of Florida on this. That's why it takes a while to build something. I said it on Shane Matthews' podcast. I'll say it again. Florida is in a Florida State-type rebuild. Mike Norvell and company keep pointing to what he did. First year, what, three and seven or whatever they were, three and six. Second year, five and seven, then 10 and three. And here you go, national title contender. But it takes time to do this. And I know every now and then you run across somebody that does it immediately. Okay. You have to look at it like weight loss. You lose 15, 20 pounds in two weeks, it's not sustainable. It has to be long-ranging, long thought out. So Florida's going to be okay with Georgia. I, look, I think Georgia still could have a tough road at Tennessee, but they'll, they'll beat Missouri at home by double digits, at least. And then Georgia, LSU, Georgia, Alabama, you could see a way if LSU beats Bama, Georgia, Ole Miss, it's a possibility, although I don't know how you get there. <laughs> the SEC is the conference that we kind of have an idea of what we're going to get. It's not concrete yet, but I mean, Georgia, Tennessee, and Missouri still alive. Ole Miss, Bama, LSU still alive. So you still have six teams, but we kind of know where we're going. Other conferences still open as well. Pac-12 still open. ACC is settling into Louisville v. Florida State, right? Big Ten is Penn State, or Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan v. Wisconsin or Iowa. Start, starting to settle in here a little bit. But with Florida and Georgia, you know, you start to start to think about what's going to happen coming up here. And CBS Sports with the story that now they're opening up the thought process of 
where this game is going to be played after next season because the contract expires after next season. And what do you have? You have yourself a situation where the Jaguars after next football season, more than likely going to be embarking on a multiple year renovation project. So the rule of thought always has been, we'll just go back to campus for a couple years, but it looks like that may not happen as the bidding may be open. Why would they do this to create competition? Jacksonville is going to build this brand spanking new stadium and you're going to have to bid against other cities, other entities. Now, what do I think is going to happen? Well, look, you thought it was going to be easy. We're going to go to Georgia. We're going to go to Florida. We're good to go. Florida may be embarking on their own three, four, five hundred million dollar renovation. So what do you see here? I know what the fun scenario is. What's going to happen is they're going to stick this sucker at the do- at the Mercedes-Benz Dome, and they're going to stick it in Tampa. That's what they're going to do. Now, I know Orlando's interested. I, I know that that's what – those two seem to be the, uh, the smart choices. Florida gets a de facto home game down in Tampa. Georgia gets to finally get this game close to its fan base. And then you're back into Jacksonville. Now, the fun scenario is this. The fun scenario is if somehow the Jaguars end up at Daytona Motor Speedway, then Florida v. Georgia just plays at Daytona. You talk about the cocktail party, 50-50 split, you throw that sucker at Daytona, now you got some fun. The fun scenario in this is Florida v. Georgia at Daytona International Speedway. That's the fun scenario. What do I think is going to happen? I think it's in Tampa one year. I think it's in Atlanta the other. Then you're back into Jacksonville. But for two years at Daytona, it could be fun. You keep it. But now you're moving even farther away for Georgia. Will they want to do that? I don't know. You could, wow. You could really make that neat. Now, we haven't heard much about Daytona being a possible home for the Jaguars. That's if it's a home. Because if it's a home for the Jaguars, Jaguars just have a bye that week or they're in London. Then Florida, Georgia's at Daytona. If the structure's already built, food for thought. So we'll see what happens with it, but I think you're going to end up Tampa, Atlanta. Speaking of football and the fun scenario, uh, this Jim Harbaugh thing, who Harbaugh hesitation is now we know that Michigan has decided to pump the brakes on making Jim Harbaugh the highest paid coach in all of college football. What would that have looked like? It had to be nine years, 110 million to pull it off. So what are we looking at there? 11 million a year, 12 million a year. Whoa. It would have essentially been a lifetime contract. He's what knocking on the door 60. That's what it would have been. Been a 10 year deal. And look, it made sense a month ago. Made sense. Now, not so much. As Michigan's withdrawing this, this is the first side. This is going to end terribly for Jim Harbaugh. It is. And then stories start to come out that, wait a second here, running off to the NFL is not going to be as simple as everyone thinks. It's like, oh, he's just going to go to the NFL. People are raising their hand going, um, he's cheating, and that's why he's successful in college. What's going on here? Not a slam dunk. It's not was a year ago. Not now. So if I'm boy, this Michigan Jim Harbaugh thing, and I'm trying to figure out what's the best case scenario here. It's the best case. If you're college football, the best case is Ohio state beats Michigan. Michigan doesn't make the playoff. And now you can breathe a gigantic sigh of relief. The nightmare scenario is Michigan wins a national title. Because he's still one in five in bowl games, and you've got was he one in five, one in six in bowl games? So you still have this situation where you can kind of paint this broad brush where he hadn't really won anything. Um, so we don't have to really take a lot away, and we can suspend him for a year. There's things that you can do in here to to kind of pull this off. If they lose, if they win, different story. I don't know from Michigan's perspective. You win a championship, just have it taken away. So I, I phew. wowza. 
And does he continue at Michigan? Well, it depends on how deep this goes. You start taking away bowls for two or three years. Remember, three years ago, this was a school that had cut his money. Had to fire assistants, take pay away. He built it back up. They were going to reward him. Not anymore. So from Harbaugh's perspective, okay, they cut your pay. You start to win. They're going to pay you again. They take it away again. Michigan's making it known here that, that major concerns. Now they'll launch an investigation and do all of these things, but the paper trail on this is pretty thick. Now, regardless of whether or not you think it's fair or not, or this is cheating or not, it doesn't really matter at this point because there's smoke and fire here. The question is, how much smoke, how much fire? If you're okay with going there and recording and stealing signals and all those things, okay. If you're okay with it, you're okay with it. But if you're not okay with it, and the NCAA is not okay with it, you may say, well, jaywalking's not that big of a deal. Well, he still can write you a ticket for it. Insider trading's not that big of a deal. You still go to jail for it. Still go to jail for it. So, uh, you know, you can sit there and say the law is the law because it is. If you run a red light at 2 in the morning and nobody's around, eh, you run a red light at 2 p.m. and there's a bunch of people walking around, you got yourself a different story. Still the same law violation. Actually, then you start throwing in manslaughter and other things. But oof. Go M, go blue. I... I what an ugly scenario, and I'm, I'm trying to think of anything that's even close to this. A decade ago, we had an instance with Jameis Winston stealing crabs, and the NCAA, are they going to not keep him eligible? Is he going to be eligible? And they made him not eligible, but then they made him eligible. Individual player, though, right? Had the same thing happen with Cam Newton. He's not eligible, then he becomes eligible um, with Auburn because of the money at Mississippi State, but he becomes eligible, and they win a championship. This happened in a similar fashion with Winston, but they got smoked, so it didn't matter. Is what Cam Newton was to Auburn, is that what Harbaugh is to Michigan this year? I, coaches are a little bit different. I don't know what you do. I, I wrote down here, how does this end well? How does this end well if you're Michigan? You win the national championship. Don't take it away. You don't win the national championship. Okay, let's say let's say you're Michigan and you stumble at Penn State. Let's say Penn State gets you, and then you lose to Ohio State at the end, and you're ten and two, and you end up in whatever big bowl and say the Citrus Bowl, and you beat like an Ole Miss. Okay, now what? You, you lose to Ohio State and you end up in the Rose Bowl or now you're one of the college, citrus citrus Fiesta Bowl or whatever and you and you beat um, you, you beat Oregon you beat Washington you beat Florida State you beat Oklahoma now what uh, a little horrible hesitation for you all right wanted to wrap with this here we are calendar slipping to November. And it is the most competitive Heisman race that I can think of since, was it 09? The year that gave us Mark Ingram. The year that gave us, was that Colt McCoy? The year that gave us Indama Kung Su, Tim Tebow. I mean, we had that. That was a year, baby. You had five different guys that could have won that sucker. Ingram wins it. You could have voted for Sue. You could have voted. I mean, Tebow was undefeated, then he got smoked by Alabama, but he had another good year. Right now, there are five guys I think you could vote for. It's November, and there's five different guys you could realistically vote for. And I know, depending on pockets and where people live, they vote ridiculous anyway. I don't play that game. Right now, you could Bo Nix. Bo Nix outplayed Michael Penix when Oregon lost to him. But Oregon or Washington did beat him. And Michael Penix Jr. hasn't been great, but they continue to win. So Penix and Nix out of the Pac 12. 
McCarthy at Michigan, and Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State. Now, Brock Bowers would have been a position player that had had a crack at this thing. He's hurt. So Marvin Harrison Jr. starts to get those votes, and after next week, Marvin, Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. will be over 1,000 yards, and he'll likely – Will he be there? Not maybe not quite, but he'll be close to double digit touchdowns. When it's all said and done, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to have around 12, 1300 yards and about 14 or 15 touchdowns. Is that Devontae Smith type of stuff? I and then Jordan Travis from Florida State, who's having a great year too. You can vote for any of those guys. I don't know if Harrison's numbers are quite there yet. Compared to the other two, but he's getting pretty close in the last two weeks against Wisconsin and Penn State. What's he have, like 300 yards receiving and four touchdowns? Yeah, he's doing it in big games. And then, look, the McCarthy v. Harrison Jr. showdown. We've already had Penix and Knicks. We're going to get it again. So there'll be some clarity in there. Jordan Travis is going to start accumulating ridiculous stats. And uh, those are the five. Try to talk me into quarterback LSU. Yeah, if they come out and they beat Bama this weekend in Bama, he will elevate. Nobody at Georgia. See? May's out of it now at North Carolina. The guy that I left off this list, Caleb Williams, put together a massive statistical game. And they win. So if, if USC could somehow run the table, which they're not going to do, they got to play Oregon, they're going to get beat by them. If somehow USC could run the table, he could be right back in the discussion. But right now, Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., Marvin Harrison Jr., Jordan Travis, McCarthy. you got five different guys you could vote for. Well, what about so-and-so? I know you can you can do the what about all you want. But I would, if you came to me and said, I'm voting for Bo Nix, I'd be like, okay. I'm voting for my, Michael Penix Jr. Oh, okay. I'm voting for Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Hey, hey, Seth, I really think right now that Jordan Travis wins it. Okay. I think McCarthy wins it. All, all right. Now, if you go, I'm going quarterback LSU, I'd be like, ah, they've lost, they're six and two, gang. I don't know if you're, you can't. I'm going Caleb Williams. They're six and two, man. I don't know if you can do that. See where I'm going with that? Now, a couple monster wins next week, and you can ascend right back in there. So, I, wide open Heisman. I love the hit list. I do. Playing those Heisman hits. And right now, five different guys get a first place vote. And five end up getting invited to New York. I mean, it would be fascinating down the stretch we come with these five guys. It would be even more fascinating if LSU does beat Alabama next weekend. Daniels enters the mix. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, what about, what about think about Ohio state now is they, it, the schedule starts to soften up for them. So Marvin Harrison jr. Could have like, I mean, good gracious coming up here. It, the only difference that is they get up big on somebody. It may not matter, but he could have himself a 200 yard, three touchdown game coming up, which those five guys, if I, if I, if right now, if I were voting today, I think Bo Nix, Bo Nix has, has had the best season of ever any of these guys, but Jordan Travis is I, right there as well. Look, he's got big wins too. He's got the LSU when he's got big wins under his pocket. In his pocket. Gotta love it. Harp on Sports, the bar, podcast, media, audio, radio network. Follow, share, like, subscribe at Harp on Sports Twitter, at Harp on Sports Instagram, Auditory Route, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Apple Podcast, under the Harp on Sports, the bar heading, Harp on Sports Facebook page, of course, Harp on Sports YouTube channel, and of course, HarpOnSports.com. Remember, stay clean, stay focused. Stay strong. Frankenstein. Follow with your friends.